for 20 plus years, we've been promising personalized learning for kids. And now we finally have a tool that could make good on that promise. And I think if we don't embrace it for that purpose alone, then we're doing a disservice to our kids. You're listening to the smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This is our district talk segment where we interview district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday shine online. Now, let's get back to the interview. I'm Jared Bloom, Superintendent of Schools in Franklin Square Union Free School District in Franklin Square, New York, on Long Island. We have approximately 2,000 students in pre-K through sixth grade across three schools. Superintendent, it's so great to have you here today. A, a special part of my heart is in Long Island and, and really in the surrounding area. I've been there so many times to help share our message of keeping students safe so they can someday shine online on these digital devices. And I'm honored to have you here today as a guest so we can inspire other district leaders about how to be the best leader in the district, how to nurture resilient kids in the future so that when they're 25, they know how to use these tools in a positive way and they understand themselves and they're positive in the community. So I'm really pumped that you're here today. The biggest question, the first question I have for you, Superintendent, is what's your biggest accomplishment as a district over the past one to four years? So I think for us as a school district over the last four years, I'm really proud of the opportunities that we are providing to our elementary students. Typically in an elementary school, you don't see uh, a ton of clubs after school and before school. We have a district-wide theater program. We have coding in, in pre-K through sixth grade, both unplugged and online. Just lots of opportunities for students for Saturday enrichment and just making sure that our students are completely engaged in the uh, experience that we have to offer here in Franklin Square. That and just making sure that all of our schools are providing a common curriculum across all of our schools. We've been working really hard at that over the last couple of years. I'm really excited to be starting the 24-25 school year on that note. What advice, Superintendent, do you have for other school districts to deal with possible social media issues that may originate on a social media app, but create a very real problem on campus? The number one thing is education, right? It's really important to make sure that we're not just handing over keys to a computer or a phone, but we're making sure that students have the tools that they need to understand uh, these devices, as well as the various sites that are out there and the good and the bad. And it's important that we're also providing that same uh, knowledge to our parents and also to our teachers and staff. They need to know that. And finally, I think it's really important that we're modeling for our students and for everyone else how we're using those tools. And if we're using those tools in a positive light and we're using them in school in a positive way, I think that goes a long way in mitigating a lot of those situations that happen. And when they do, we have to do a lot of education and support. Education, modeling, so true. I want to move into a more positive question. Can you provide some examples of how your students may have used their social media or their profiles in a positive or productive way? that may have benefited themselves or their community? I, I think for us, it's a little bit unique in that we have pre K to sixth graders. So our students move, leave us in sixth grade and they go to a high school, central high school district where they have seven through 12. But we do have a superintendent student advisory group and that group is comprised of fourth through sixth graders. Once they are asked to be on this advisory, they stay with us for those three years. So uh, that's a wonderful thing. And they have a lot of input in terms of representing their peers on the student advisory for superintendents. They have a lot of input in terms of the budget process, uh, and they have a lot of input in terms of the activities uh, that they want to promote and be a part of. And so one of the things that comes to mind is just the students wanted to do a kindness cart for the teachers and staff in, in the school. And so they actually worked with our mental health teams to put these kindness carts together, actually walked around school providing coffee and treats and then use social media along with the staff in the building to promote what was happening uh, and spread that kindness. And I think that, again, goes a, a long way in bringing up the spirits and, and morale and showing what our students have the power to do, the power that they have to change lives and change the world. I really like that tactical example. Students are on campus doing something kind of fun that's interactive. It's really neat. And 
other students see that, well, I guess that's behavior I should emulate in other areas. I, I mean, it really, an example begets more of those examples. And, and so I, I love that. I haven't heard of kind, kindness cart before. I think that's a really good key takeaway for our audience. Let's move into the next question I have for you, Superintendent. What suggestions do you have for parents to encourage their kids to use technology in a positive way, both in the classroom and at home? One of the things that I, I'm always thinking about is technology is the future and we have to prepare students for their future, prepare our children for their future. And so I think it's really important that parents are aware of all of the tools that are out there. It's our job as educators to make sure we're doing our best to make sure that all the tools we use in school and all the tools that may be out there that students have access to that they're aware of. But I think providing time for families to spend together doing activities, using technology in a positive way, whether it's coding, STEAM activities, whether it's, again, posting in a positive light some of the activities that they're involved with, creating online portfolios that may one day become college portfolios. I think there's a lot of opportunities to work together to create these positive experiences between family, parent, guardian, and child that will you know, end with uh, some wonderful outcomes uh, at the end. I love that. I'm, I think that really is, we're hearing from a lot of superintendents that the parent engagement with the kids and, and, and the dialogue and the emulating that at home, so, so crucial to every community. So on that note, I'd like to dive into the next question. What are your suggestions for other districts to increase parent engagement in the community? But also, are there any specific channels or events that get the biggest turnout? For us, especially as an elementary district, tapping into the PTA is critical. Getting parents involved in the activities that we're running in our schools. When I go to events that are run by our PTAs in each of our school buildings, we have tons and tons, hundreds and hundreds of kids and their parents coming together for lots of fun activities, whether it's a sports night or a bingo night. Those activities bring out tons of parents. We also do a, a tremendous amount of work in terms of bringing parents in for educational activities, whether it's kindergarten orientation or pre-K orientation. Those are wonderful activities. But we just started doing a district-wide theater production and we sell out every production. Those, the room is packed with parents and community members who are coming not only to support their own kids, but to support all students that are involved in the production, both behind the scenes and in front. Those are the things that I think are really important for communities. Again, there's the tech night and the coding nights and things that we're continuing to look at to promote parent involvement. But I think it's really important to find those activities that bring everybody together to celebrate and have fun together. Well said, and it sounds like it's going well there. It is. So we're gonna about to dive in, Superintendent, into the hottest topic, the question everybody's talking about when it comes to AI. But before we do that, I wanna pause for just a sec and, and, and say thank you to my incredible team at smartsocial.com and the 100 plus school districts nationwide that have partnered with us so that smartsocial.com can deliver 54 plus live events to each community nationwide. Gone are the days that all of our partners know. Gone are the days of one social media safety night, training parents on TikTok. Now we do 54 plus in both English, Espanol, Mandarin, and 12 other languages in replays. No parent is left behind. And thank you also to my incredible team for getting all the teens in our teen-led program and our premium parent newsletter. We're impacting millions of students nationwide by teaching everybody safety precautions. But then also we can use these amazing tools. We call them Ferraris. These amazing Ferraris with a little bit of training, we can drive them safely and we can make sure they help kids launch into their future. So shout out to everybody at smartsocial.com. And also, this is about the 126th episode of our Superintendent District Leader podcast. So we're just grateful to everybody. It's a lot of momentum. It's really, really incredible. All right, Superintendent, we're back to the podcast. This is the question that everybody has. Everybody is buzzing about this. I feel like we've been talking about it for a year and a half. How is your school district approaching AI tools like ChatGPT, Gemini, and Claude? As a former dot-commer, before I went into education, I embrace new technology. I think it's critical that we look at new technology as an opportunity and, and not just a roadblock. And so we have embraced it. We are using chat for schools right now, but I tell all of our staff, and we've done a ton of training already, but I tell my team, my staff members that 
ChatGPT or Claude or any of the other tools, Gemini, that are out there, they're just tools. We have to learn how to prompt. We have to learn the behind the scenes, but the tool may change tomorrow. So whatever we're using today, whatever prompt we're using, it may work today. It may not work tomorrow. It may be a different tool. The bottom line for us is how do we help students to think critically, to be able to utilize the tools in a way that's going to enhance their learning? I think it's important to also recognize that for 20 plus years, we've been promising personalized learning for kids. Yeah. And now we finally have a tool that could make good on that promise. And I think if we don't embrace it for that purpose alone, then we're doing a disservice to our kids. It's not going anywhere. The technology is here to stay. And either you're going to learn to use the technology and move forward, or somebody else is going to use the technology and advance even more. For us, it's embracing the technology. It's definitely, you know, making sure that students are safe, that we're talking about PII and personal identified information. I love what you said, Superintendent, because you're kind of right. If we go back to the car analysis, if we if we say, here's a car, some people, no, no, it might hit the curb. Oh, no, no, it might, it might do this. Yeah, but the car can get on the road and can take you from Los Angeles to New York. Like the don't miss the bigger picture. Let's let's not miss the forest for the trees. Uh, and so I agree with you. And I, I love what you said about it really is a personal tutor. If we're smart with it, and if we give kids guided access about, hey, let's not put your data in. If it sees anything that's bad, tell your parents, tell a trusted adult, let's do it together. And it won't just give you the answer. It will teach you how to find the math problem. It will teach you how to structure and maybe be a better writer. So exciting. And I, I love your background in tech. I think that's neat. Thank you. It's funny, but uh, I often get asked the question. I've actually been traveling a little bit and, and speaking locally about artificial intelligence in, in classrooms. And uh, we started a superintendent mastermind group with a couple of superintendents. But I often get asked the question, how do we know if kids are cheating and how do we really understand what they're doing with AI? And there's a great book called, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. And most people know it. If you remember the scene where the teacher is giving a test and Margaret is being peer pressured into not writing her name on the test along with every student in the class. And so nobody writes their name on the test and they think that the teacher is going to be completely confused. And the next morning, they all get their test back on their desk. It's graded and their names are on the test because he knew that. And that's what we yeah. need to be able to do. We need to know, yeah. we need to know our kids. And if we know our kids, then we can use the technology to enhance their learning and support them. Yeah, so true. So, so many great things here. And yeah, there will be some cheating, but eventually if we adjust and let kids learn through it and cite it properly, the sky's the limit. Because guess what? We all do have a calculator in our, in our pockets. And as we kids, do. we used to be warned, you're not going to have a calculator everywhere you go. Well, now we do. But the benefits of knowing back of the napkin math and be able to run around town and go, oh, I can calculate that really fast. And if I need it to the fifth decimal, I could do that too, but I don't have time for this because I got to have it up here. There's so many benefits as long as we explain that to students. Superintendent, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on here today with us. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate the time. Absolutely. The rest of you listening all over the country, whether you're a parent, whether you are in the PTA, whether you're a superintendent, director, counselor, principal, we love you here at smartsocial.com. And remember, it's not just about safety and being precautionary. It's how do we build a, a platform of safety so that then we can let these students shine online. A positive online presence, understanding how to use and drive these digital tools that we're giving them at such a young age, and really also making sure the parents sit in the passenger seat for quite a while. Are you driving safely? You have your learner's permit. Let's have a rich dialogue. Let's be vulnerable. And let's use these things together. It's not easy parenting, but we're here along uh, for the ride with you. And we're so grateful for everybody, and especially the smartsocial.com team, the army of amazing parents that do our research and our hard work. We're grateful for to everybody. And as always, my friends, Remember to keep it light, bright, and polite because your kids are watching what you're doing online. We'll see you all on the next episode. Have a great rest of the day. Take care. Thanks for listening to our smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This was our district talk segment where we interview school district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday launch into their future by shining online. 
This episode was brought to you by our smartsocial.com VIP program. It's called the Very Informed Parent Program, which helps you engage your students with teen-led video lessons. Stay one step ahead with our premium parent newsletter and discover hidden features on trending apps on teens' phones and our 54 plus live parent and student friendly events every single year. You can click on the link below to chat with one of our team members if you want a free pass to our VIP program to support your community with our smartsocial.com resources. And if you're a district leader who has a success story, we would love to feature you on a future episode. You can click the links below to reach out. Thanks so much for listening, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Have a great day.